we are delving into the unique cultural phenomenon that is the Harlem Globetrotters as they near their 100th anniversary. Plus, the NBA and NHL conference finals are set, and Saudi Arabia is further integrating itself into tennis. It's Tuesday, May 21st. I'm Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. The NBA conference finals are set. The Celtics will take on the Pacers starting tonight, and the Timberwolves and Mavericks will follow suit tomorrow. The NBA missed out on having its biggest market and defending champs in the semifinals with the Knicks and Nuggets losing in seven games. In fact, had the Knicks and the Boston Bruins both won their series, we would have had simultaneous New York versus Boston conference finals. Instead, the only city to have a presence in both the NBA and NHL semifinals will be Dallas, which has a shot at a three championship year with the Rangers as reigning World Series champs. As for the NBA, they have an opportunity to showcase established stars like Jason Tatum and Luka Doncic, along with emerging ones like Anthony Edwards and Tyrese Halliburton. Sure, they would have preferred New York and LA in there as they're negotiating media rights, but it's not like they're left empty handed here. This is the league's chance to show what it can do with mid market teams on its biggest stage. Speaking of those media rights negotiations, Alex Sherman of CNBC reports that Warner Bros. Discovery has matching rights on any offer the NBA gets from NBC or another source, but it's not clear if the NBA is contractually obligated to take a matching offer that would keep the league on TNT. Saudi Arabia's presence in tennis continues to grow. The nation's public investment fund has a five-year deal to sponsor the WTA women's rankings. They compare that with the ATP men's rankings where they have a deal of the same length. That's on top of last month's announcement that the nation will host the WTA finals in Riyadh in a three-year deal starting this year. The latter announcement came with a 70% increase in prize money for the tournament to $15.3 million. Saudi Arabia has tried different approaches as it seeks to become more central to the sports world and change its public reputation. In soccer and golf, the nation offered lavish sums to the biggest stars. For major events, it has spared no expense in offering to build facilities and venues. The 2029 Asian Winter Games, for instance, will take place at Trohena, a mountain resort complex in Saudi Arabia that is still under construction with an estimated cost of $500 billion. Its approach to tennis has been relatively quiet. They haven't tried to poach players and start a rival tour. It has simply outbid everyone else for major sponsorships and certain hosting rights. The result is something much smoother and cheaper than live golf. Up next, the Harlem Globetrotters have no real comparison in the sports world. Their brand of sports entertainment is still pretty unique, and at 98 years old, the brand is 23 years older than the NBA. As the Globetrotters approach their 100th birthday, they are finding their place in a more cluttered media landscape. That's the focus of their president, Keith Dawkins, and he joins us next. All right, very excited to be joined by Keith Dawkins, president of the Harlem Globetrotters and Hershend Entertainment Studios. Welcome, Keith. Uh, thanks for having me. Great to be here. Yeah, great to have you on. So what does a Harlem Globetrotter show look like in 2024? It's as awesome as it's always awesome. Listen, it's a it's a great experience. I always tell people, if you really want to understand and feel the Harlem Globetrotters brand, um, love to have you to a show, right? It's uh, everyone's there in terms of folks from 8 to 80. Uh, I actually had a conversation today with a former colleague who was uh, said to me that her mom, who's 74 or 5, was talking about, oh my God, I'm so excited you're going to meet with, you know, the president of the Harlem Globetrotters because she, her mom remembers her parents taking the Globetrotters. So, you know, that's really a awesome thing to think about being, you know, charged with this great responsibility of being with a brand almost a hundred years old that touched so many people's lives, brings joy and possibilities and fun and everything to them. Um, is still a brand that keeps on enduring. And I think it's a combination of that fun piece that we bring to the table, right? And the entertainment quality, the high level basketball skills and all that work. But there's a heart at the underpinning of the Globetrotters that has endured for the years. And that's our, why we get called, you know, these ambassadors of goodwill and the, and the impact that we have around the globe that way. It's really our kind of secret sauce that se- separates us from everyone. Yeah. And it's, I hadn't realized until, you know, shortly before this interview that the Globetrotters have been around 100 years. I think of them as kind of like an 80s, 90s phenomenon, yeah. but that's just, you know, from my own memory. Um, yeah. Uh, um, how has the brand evolved? I mean, it, you know, you've got a very strong brand of the, yeah, like fun, kind of tricky, skilled basketball, but ha- has that changed over the 100 years? Or if we went back, you know, to the 40s, 50s, would it still have that kind of feel? Yeah, I think some things about it have changed, right? Athletes have changed, right? Athletes are, you know, modern day, they're dynamic, and they do different tricks and different skills. And there's different athleticism going on, you see that across the fabric of sports. Um, Yet there's this core underpinning of things that we do that are tried and true and traditions of the organization of the brand. And so I think it's that continuity that 
if you are 70 plus years old um, and you've seen the globe shotters before or 50 years old and seen the globe shotters before it's like great comfort food for you but it's also delivered in a way that feels very modern and very today and that's everything from the um, entertainment value to the music that we play to the um, athletes in terms of what they represent in terms of how they kind of conduct themselves and handle themselves so it feels very much a great blend of its tradition and its legacy and its modern take and expression of the brand. Yeah. And you mentioned that, you know, athletes themselves have you know, changed, sports have changed. I was wondering if it's harder these days to differentiate yourself from the NBA, obviously very different products, but the NBA has gone from a, a much rougher sort of physical league to one that's a lot more skill-based, you know, you're seeing longer shots and crazy drives and crazy passes. Uh, more than you did in previous generations. I'm wondering if, you know, they're, they're edging into your turf a little bit. Well, I'll say two things to that. I think one, it actually validates what the globe shotters do, right? Because, you know, whereas globe shotters used to be the only place that was showing that level of skill and that level of artistry, that level of kind of wide out, uh, kind of open um, dynamic play. And now when you see that across the NBA landscape, across the college landscape, across the European landscape, right? In terms of the globalization of the sport, you're like, wow, the globe charts have been there all along, right? Um, that's everything from, you know, the four point shot that we do, right? In terms of shooting from the deep range, you hear with Kate McClark, the logo three or Steph Curry, the logo three, right? Like we shoot from there all the time we have as a four point shot. So I actually think it validates from a, a, a skillfulness and an artistry that what we've been doing. At the same time, we don't think about the NBA or any of those leagues in that way, because we know that the audience that comes to us are sports fans, they're basketball fans, um, but we're an entertainment brand, right? And so they're coming there because like, listen, this is a great place that we can bring our family of three, four, five, or whatever it is. We can bring the whole family together. No one in our arena, you know, even when we talk about sports being a place that brings people together, but at the end of the day, it's like, if I'm a Lakers fan, I'm rooting against, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Zion and those guys tonight, right? The yeah. No one's booing the referees at our games. No one's rooting against anyone in our games. Everyone shows up. They got their differences outside the arena. They are a common theme when they come in into the arena. They stand up at the end and give everyone a standing ovation. Um, it's it's there's nothing like it in 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 this sporting world um, and uh, globally that's endured for this long. And it's really good. it's a it's a magical thing. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are now working with IMG as you prepare yeah. for the hundredth anniversary. How do you expect them to kind of shape what you do? Well, I think there's a few things in terms of what excites me about the IMG relationship. So one is um, it's a validator of the history of the brand, but it's also a validator of where we're moving forward, right? So listen, IMG needs no introduction in terms of the types of properties that live under their tent, their size and scale, their depth and breadth and the powerhouse that they are. So it's a real honor that they look at the Globe Globetrotters as, as a brand that they want to be in business with. Um, both in terms of our history and our legacy and also where we're going. And then secondly, it's like, you know, this idea that I say and over and over again, is like, you know, the Globetrotters are not a tour. The Globetrotters are this beloved, almost again, hundred year old intellectual property. Um, and it's greatest expression for many years has been a tour, but the opportunity with the Globetrotters um, to really, what I care about is making sure that it's here for another hundred years, right? And so what's the work that we're doing against that now? And that's gonna be partnerships like IMG, right? Expanding our licensing footprint, expanding our merchandise footprint, expanding our, just bucket our consumer products uh, footprint globally. And I look at those, obviously those are revenue generating ideas, um, but they're really consumer touch points. You know, I spent a lot of time, you know, Nickelodeon's example, where I worked for many years and, you know, there were kids who grew up loving Dora the Explorer and the first time they, for some, the, the first uh, connection point with Dora was on the TV screen. For others, it was through tablets and devices as those came into play. For others, it was because they walked into a retail space and got the Dora doll. Mm -hmm. And then that touch point brought them into the other touch points, right? So in order to really be a 360 brand that has deep emotional connections with an audience and endures for years you know, ahead, you have to have partners, best in class partners who can bring us into all those uh, uh, spaces. And IMG can do that for us. We're really excited about that. And yeah, thinking of those next hundred years, are there other ways you're setting yourself up or just kind of planning for, you know, what's ultimately an uncertain future uh, to, yeah, to have this enduring success? Is it just, you know, basically keep doing what you're doing? 
No, it's about being where all the places where the audience is and a tour only mindset, meaning, you know, we roll out and our tour is fantastic, right? It's 250 plus dates around North America, another hundred plus dates around planet, the rest of planet earth, I'd like to say. But when you think about that, that's a limited amount of touch points with an audience, right? So if a person wakes up and first thing in the morning, they're on some sort of mobile device, Globe Charters needs to be there, right? If they're on some gaming platform, the Globe Charters needs to be there. If they're AI and VR, the Globe Charters need to be there. If they're on linear platforms or nonlinear platforms, streaming platforms, right? Um, Globe Charters need to be there. We have a big, giant, addressable audience of kids and families and a Gen Z crowd and the older bucket that I'm in somehow I got in that bucket <laughs> and um, we need to be connected with those audience in all the different pathways um, that they live in ways that are unique to them, that are important to them. Um, and that makes sense to them. And the globe charts need to be in all those touch points. And so I think in doing that, that's the sea shift, right? Um, you know, for the last 20, 30, 40 years, the idea was like, we're a tour that runs around planet earth. And, you know, my, our point of view is, no, we're the Harlem Globe Charters, the world famous Harlem Globe Charters with this beloved intellectual property. And in doing that, you need to kind of think about yourself differently in order to think about the different business differently. And therefore, that allows you to have those great consumer touch points. And in, and in doing that, the most important thing is then you've created those next generation of fans who will be talking about you for the next 50, 60, 70 years. And then secondary to that, which is primary as a business thing, right? You're driving revenue in ways that you didn't even imagine. Um, because now you've created all these, these great new opportunities that we didn't create before. Thinking about the Globetrotters, and it occurred to me that there really isn't much like you. I mean, the, the easiest, or the, I'm wondering if you think this is a good comparison, but the main brand that comes to mind for me is the Savannah Bananas. Obviously, it doesn't have the history of the Globetrotters, but I can't think of other sort of sports entertainment groups i mean you know i guess you could throw in like wwe that's kind of a different thing but um i'm wondering if um why you think there haven't been successful copycats both either in basketball or in other sports it's hard um meaning you know people um there's the sports world the traditional sports world in terms of that business and that model and athletes who chase that path um, there's complete kind of scripted entertainment world of Game of Thrones or whatever we know that world. And then, you know, how do you blend the two? And it's been hard. And that's why most people stay away from it and don't even want to touch it. Right. Um, and we have been at this for a long time. Right. Um, I'm thrilled to be, you know, kind of a conduit of this, uh, of this brand and stuff now. And, um, it's a space that, people really aren't looking to touch, but I don't really give much thought to um, whether someone is uh, kind of imitating what we have done or, or trying to create their own version of that um, because that can be distracting, right? And the competition, if you want to think about it that way, if that's where you're going with your question, aren't just those types of brands. It's more about the competition is everywhere that the audience is this is a, this is a very uh dynamic time in terms of media entertainment it's ripe with opportunity because there's so many platforms there's so many ways to access the audience but it's also hard because of the fact that there are so many ways to access the audience so what are the right pathways and what are the right choices and all of these different things are out there for vying for an audience um attention so i was the people i was like we don't need to have all the answers there but we do need to be swimming down all the pathways, all the streams where the audience is. And for the last 20 or 30 years, the Globetrotters have not been doing that. Um, you know, when people talk about the heyday of the Globetrotters, you know, this is why people are shocked to find out it's almost 100 years old because they talk about the better luck lemon, curly Neal, that era, as if there weren't Globetrotters before that. But those were also the era when Globetrotters were on TV, they were on Scooby Doo, they were on Wild Wild Sports, they were on a lunchbox, they were on. So it was a simpler world there in terms of choices. But you're talking about content, you're talking about consumer products, you're talking about a live tour, you're talking about, you know, uh, uh, kind of philanthropic work, you're talking about those things, right? So it's really getting back to that original playbook that big dynamic brands don't stray away from that, right? You can look at the Marvel Universe, you can look at a lot of examples of this. Um, they create multiple touch points to the audience. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking about the future of the Globetrotters, you know, if, if for your playbook, how much of it, what percent of it is the live show and what percent is everything else? 
Um, well, without giving like financial mm-hmm. math to that, I would say this, I want to diversify our portfolio. Um, I want to maybe lessen our reliance on the live tour, but also have the live tour make more money than it's ever made before, but we've diversified the pie. Um, and those things may sound at odds to each other, but, but they're not because in the, actually it was funny. I was just in a conversation about this before this conversation, the heat that we create for the brand away from that live tour benefits the tour, right? Signing deals with IMG, putting Globetrotters back on TV for the first time in 40 years, launching a CSR efforts, right? Aligned around, you know, uh, education, health and wellness and community empowerment and teaming up with Microsoft and Comic Relief Red Nose and the State Department. All, the, all of that stuff is diversifying revenue streams, diversifying the pie, creating more touch points with the consumers in ways that are away from the tour. But all of that makes the tour more magical, has us have our highest grossing game of all time at Madison Square Garden. We were back in the garden for the first time in years. Actually, it was one of the reasons why the garden wanted us back because of all this brand heat. So those things work hand in hand with each other, right? Um, B2B and B2C, right? So all that work that we do away from the tour idea services the tour, but all that stuff is in service to the Harlem Globetrotters brand. Um, and that's what, that's what we, I think lost sight of for years is like we were servicing the tour, but we weren't servicing the business, the underlying business of the Harlem Globetrotters brand. And, and, you know, people hear me say over and over again, brands die when they are not being nourished and, and, and cultivated and, or don't recognize to your question before about other competition, don't recognize the environment around them. Um, so we're eyes wide open around the environment that we live in, like this this cluttered media entertainment space, and we're putting a lot of time into nourishing this brand. All right, fascinating stuff. Keith Dawkins, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Thanks for having me today, I appreciate it. That's it for today. Leave us a rating and review wherever you like to tune in and make sure you are subscribed. Thanks for listening. We will see you tomorrow.